guys, welcome to another Zoom chat. Today I'm very happy to have Lions prop Yanni Duplessis with me. Yanni, I never thought I'd be um, introducing you as a, as a Lions prop. Uh, definitely an unexpected move. Um, yeah, just uh, tell me how you how you coping in, in lockdown and uh, about how the move to the Lions came about. Um, well, Greg, to be completely honest, I, I also never saw myself playing for the Lions, but um, um, life, um, life takes you to places um, that you never expected, and um, um, it's it's up to you to make the best of it. Um, I I'm extremely happy to be home. Uh, we were in France. We were thinking of maybe settling there or putting the kids through school there, and um, my wife bought. Um, prayer book, 40-day uh, prayer challenge. And on day 10, we got a call from South Africa, which was the Lions. And it's almost like the Lord pushed us um, pushed us back home. And I can tell you that um, I cannot be happier um, to be back home than anywhere in the world. That's great. And uh, Yanni, where are you now um, in terms of, of lockdown? I mean, how are you staying active and uh, keeping the body as, as fit as possible? Well, I... We were in self-isolation for two weeks after our New Zealand tour because the Prime Minister of New Zealand, um, well, she was probably the one who started the end of Super Active because she said that anybody that comes from outside or any foreign country should um, be isolated for 14 days before they can play. So um, fact of the matter is uh, before we could play the Highlanders, which was um, our, our next scheduled match, um, they were supposed to go into a two-week self-isolation. And um, so then she said, well, uh, Super Rugby is over. So when we got back in South Africa, because we went through a high-risk high risk area, which, which is an airport, um, um, we had to be in self-isolation for, for two weeks at home as well. Um, to be completely honest, I thought self-isolation... I'll, I'll take it easy for a week if I don't have any fever or I if I don't get sick. Um, I the next Monday we'll probably start training again because I mean you know you know how work any work is, um, but especially rugby, um, they don't really give you off for free. So I, I was mentally preparing myself to to be in isolation for a for a little bit of time. On the Thursday the lockdown started. Yeah. Then the president then the president announced that um, the problem is really like much bigger than what what we envisioned and what we expected and um, so yes I was stranded um, on my family farm in Bethlehem um, so up until now I'm I'm here like you can see I only have a singlet uh, from the lines um, and that's why I look so so um, uh, how do you, how do they say help my start like empty um, uh, but yes, uh, from then up until now, I've I've been on the farm, and uh, luckily on the on a farm you're a little bit more isolated, and you've got a a, a, bit, a bit more space, so it's not you're not uh, complete you don't completely get cabin fever. For sure, and uh, Yanni, just to chat a little bit about um, where you were before you returned to South Africa. I know you've mentioned that you probably always thought you would wind wind up back in South Africa eventually uh, maybe it came a little bit sooner than expected but your time in France I mean you spent a good couple of years there um, obviously with Montpellier and uh, with your brother Bismarck and I, if I'm not mistaken you were actually in, starting to get into a bit of coaching there at, at one point is that correct? Yes I, I, I enjoyed that my time overseas extremely um, I think um, it's it gives you a different way of looking at life I, I think European life is completely different from what we're used to. So in terms of that, it was very stimulating and very, very cool. Uh, it is challenging because there's a language barrier. And if, if you do not make an effort to learn the language, you will never experience France um, up um, for its in its in its entirety. Um, the rugby, I think the rugby was a little bit um, disappointing. I think we went over with... Um, with high expectations and high hopes, but the fact of the matter is, um, I, I love my time in, time in France. I think Montpellier is a wonderful, wonderful city. Um, we played for a wonderful team, well supported, um, and yeah. So I think if if people want some personal personal 
growth and be, if you want to be challenged on different levels um, as a as a rugby player, if if you if you get an opportunity to go overseas, I think it could be it, it could be really enriching and um, and it could open your eyes to to new things. Uh, but like you say, I am very happy to be home and I am very happy to be in South Africa. I think it's the best country in the world. Great. And Yanni, I mean, at, at 37, I mean, did you, did you still think you were going to be playing for another year or two? And uh, certainly, uh, I'm not sure if you would have thought uh, Super Rugby at, at, at that age as well and getting back into the rigors of that, for that competition. I mean, how did you find it uh, at the beginning of the year starting to, to play again and, and come up against the teams that are in Super Rugby action? Um, I was under no illusion that Super Rugby is going to be tough. I mean, I, I know what Super Rugby is like, and 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 yes, it was. It, it's hard. It's quicker. Um, had a very good preseason, so physically, I I feel quite well. I feel able. I feel very very good. I think um, Rupert Wibberolster at the at the Lions, um, he he worked. He worked a little bit extra with me, and, and I must say I, I, I'm really, really um, fortunate in, in that sense that he, he put the time in. And yes, by grace, at 37, I actually feel really good. Um, I know we haven't played for a couple of weeks, but it feels like if, if, if the president said COVID-19 is over, Skadova, I would be able to run out um, next weekend or even this weekend. Um, um, so yeah, physically I feel good. Um, the be the best thing about rugby for me is being part of a team. So um, I think the the whole Lions team, the coaching team, and and the playing squad has um, has opened me um, has welcomed me with open arms. And uh, yeah, unfortunately the results haven't gone our way. But I would love to repay that um, that faith that that they have in me, and that makes me train harder. Sure. And Yanni, we were chatting a bit um, before we started recording just about the, the culture at the Lions. I mean, obviously you had a, a long career at the Sharks before you went overseas. And um, I'm sure there's still a team that, that's close to your heart in terms of the memories you have um, back, um, back in your Durban days. But I mean, just in terms of fitting in at the Lions and how you've settled there, um, maybe just chat a little bit about that, that Lions culture. And obviously for them as a team going through a bit of a rebuilding phase with uh, quite a few youngsters and a new coaching setup as well. Craig, um, yes, um, I think I think when 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 I wasn't living in Johannesburg, um, when we had to play there, it's it's at Ellis Park. It's a it's a like a, the best, most intimidating stadium in the world, and it's high on altitude. So we knew we were going to be very very tired, and we knew knew the lungs were, was going to burn. So we just wanted to go go there, play the best we can, hopefully get a win, um, and then go back home. Um, from from a team point of view, I think the Lions um, had to adapt because I think um, because it's in the biggest city in South Africa, um, you can't um, structure your working week like any normal side. So they have adapted very well to their to their circumstances and and I think the Lions have an extremely good team culture I think it's a it's a bunch of people yes people they, they they never they never look for for problems they look for solutions and and whenever pe people make a suggestion they would they would much rather say yes let's go for it um, instead of like shooting it down so um, from a culture point of view, I think the Lions have an extremely good culture. I think, I think they there's something special in in the team. And um, um, yeah, like I said, unfortunately we haven't had the results which we which we planned for and hoped for. But it's also in tough times when people when people grow and when your character is built. So yeah, it's it's we're not gonna we, it's not gonna last. And um, I can tell you that. Um, uh, yeah, watch the space. I think I think there's there's some some very exciting, very good things um, coming from from the Lions.
Great. And Yanni, I just wanted to um, divert to another subject. And, and um, obviously, uh, I'm not sure exactly where you, you were and watching uh, as the, the, the World Cup progressed last year. Um, but uh, just in terms of your, um, your memories of that tournament, uh, watching the Springboks, obviously, it's been that you played for on a number of occasions. I mean, just, just walk me through your emotions watching the, the box go and, and get another world title to the name. Um, Craig, so at the team in, at Montpellier, we, we uh, drew little, um, not straws, but we drew names out of a hat. At the start of the at the start of the competition, um, and I think I drew Ireland. Yes, I, I drew Ireland, and Ireland, of course, was one of the favourites because they they've they've been playing extremely good rugby. And then Henry Emmelman, who was who sits next to me, who sat next to me at, in the change room, he drew South Africa. And then I said to him, "Listen, give me South Africa, I'll swap you for Ireland." <laughs> and of course, he's. I mean, he's 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 young, and then and then he swapped with me. Um, and the, some of the actually our coach at the time he saw that, and some of the some of the players of which I would, will not name, they saw that I was I asked for for the South African. I want to I want to be because I mean, if you draw Japan, you had to support Japan. Um, so that was like a, a team a bit of fun. And when they saw that I drew South Africa, they laughed. They honestly, honestly laughed. That's like before the competition started. Yeah. So yeah. then I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, listen, do these guys have so little um, faith in us? Do they, do they rate us so little that they think we, they, I mean, we, we, they laugh, they laugh at us. And of course, this, the, <clears throat> the competition started and, um, the All Blacks won the first game. <clears throat> Although I think that the Pusquimox played the best rugby on out of 80 minutes for 65 minutes, they were they were better than the All Blacks. And after the first game, we we went into like a dark horse lane where nobody talked about us. Nobody, none, no remarks, no no listen you are and you are out you guys are outsiders or you, you still have a chance and and i was watching the box play and the, the type of rugby they played is very effective they just went about their business at yeah. 60 minutes they 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 killed teams and um so as the playoffs as the playoffs came um, we played against Japan, and of course we lost against Japan the last time. And Japan beat beat Ireland this year, or last year, the last uh, competition. So everybody was starting to, oh, maybe you're going to lose again. Anyway, we beat them, and um, and then things went went quite quickly because it was two games left, the semis and the finals. And um, we ha we have a, quite a big New Zealand contingent at uh, at Montpellier. And of course, they were very, very extremely uh, confident because they've won the previous two World Cups, and they were the leading team. Um, <laughs> but when uh, when England beat them, um, well, I knew we were, we are going to win. I, when England beat them, I knew we'll win um, after we beat Wales because I I just thought that um, the type of rugby we played, which we changed in the final just suits um, a final type of game. Uh, I think our important players were, were playing extremely good rugby. I think the scrum with Beast and Franz there um, did an outstanding job. And the, the longer the game went on, the, the, the nicer it was. And then when Marcus Willemopipi scored that try, I think, I think the neighbours thought that there was people on drugs there because I was, I was just so happy that um, from from being laughed at and being complete outsiders, almost almost a team that that doesn't have a chance to win, we we became champions. And um, yeah, I, I, I guess you enjoyed it as well. But um, it just it just made you realise that when when guys get together with one common goal bigger than themselves, and when they are prepared to sacrifice their own their own personal um, their own personal success for the for the better of of something bigger, 
then anything is possible. So, yeah, I, I, know, I, I guess they, they had a very good, um, they celebrated it well, but I believe you, me, we celebrated it with them, even though we worked with them. So it yeah. was extremely, extremely nice. <laughs> Right.